the Walker Arts Center is an unusual organization uh, because it is a multidisciplinary art center that's not just a museum, not just a theater, not just a cinema, not just a garden. It's all these things in one. And it came out of uh, the spirit of the WPA, the Works Progress Administration, the Federal Art Project in 1940 that was about trying to create a meeting place for all the arts where a visitor could come and meet an artist, meet living artists, and really meet the artist on common ground. And so I'd say that mission and those values just really hold true to the kind of institution that we are today. My first consulting experience with the Walker was in 1987. Martin and Mickey Friedman had decided to do a retrospective of Frank Gehry's work in uh, three galleries in Walker. And I was the local person charged with coordinating a lot of the exhibit construction for that. So after the Gary retrospective, so I was a natural person to team with locally for the Weissman Art Museum. I went to uh, MSR to work on the Weissman Art Museum with Frank Gehry. Uh, MSR was the executive architect and that's where I met John. He was in charge of the Weissman Art Museum project and he was building a team. Um, he was building a technical team and I'm a designer so I wasn't completely qualified for the job, but uh, joined the team and worked with John for about uh, two years. So John really mentored me through that experience. Um, and then through that I realized uh, what an amazing innate ability he has to understand how things are put together, um, which is incredibly valuable when you're talking about architecture. I started at uh, HGA in 1997. HGA Walker relationship at the time, it went so well that they just felt like HGA was their go-to architect or anything. So that combined with you know, me having the Wiseman experience with Gary, when the Walker board landed on Herzog and Demron to do this expansion in 2000, I think HGA and myself were a natural pick. When I first came to the Walker, the facility had just expanded and we needed a master plan. So we had a series of architects and artists come to Minneapolis and help us really do the first critiques of the campus. So David Adjay, Petra Blaza from Inside Outside, and Ai Weiwei. So when we got to the point of sorting through um, all these different ideas, that we needed someone to help us think through how to think about it. And so that's when we invited Joan and John to come to the table with us. And then their solution was so brilliant. It was clear that they were the ones to do the work for us and can do it sensitively. The Walker told us when we started working on this about four years ago, um, they said, we don't want a third charm on the charm bracelet. The first charm is the Edward Larrabee Barnes building, which is known to be one of his best buildings. Second charm being the Herzog expansion in 2005. So they didn't want a third different expression. Somehow this expansion had to be compatible or harmonious with both buildings. This is one of the few projects where we had to establish kind of rules or guidelines for how this design could evolve because it was so incredibly complicated with what we were working with as part of the existing building. So a lot of what we tried to do is just improve through simplification that whole visitor experience. The first couple of weeks that we were working on it, I probably would ask him 10 times a day to be able to do something, you know, something in terms of the design that we were looking at, and he's like, can't do it. There's a column here, or you can't do it. There's a duct in that wall. So because he understands what's in these walls and what's in this floor and what's in these ceilings, um, it saved us a lot of time and a lot of heartache. I think Joan and John have uh, created a beautiful um, completion, really, of the master plan, not just a facilities expansion, but the master plan to the campus that pays homage to both Barnes 
and to Herzog and Demeron and brings out the sort of best qualities about it, but goes back to Barnes's vision of trying to create this flow, again, about the visitor having both places to be um, come together and have a center, whether that's in that main entry lobby, but to also be able to flow um, and, and come back to that center. To have a small role in shaping this institution has been one of the most thrilling honors for both of us. And the evolution has been, you know, through the decades and having John be able to be a big part of that. John is someone who both helps think on a just very granular, practical level, but also, you know, on an ambition, you know, what if we imagine this sort of level? And that ability to balance, I think, the pragmatism with allowing really free alternative thinking is something I really have appreciated in working with John. What we tell our clients, whether it's in the interview or somewhere along the way, that you know we are involved in the project from start to finish. We're protecting the integrity of the design that way. And it's so important to be able to see it through to the very end so it doesn't get retranslated in some way along the path of figuring this building out and getting it built. I think over the years what's happened is I became a trusted advisor of the Walker because I had been involved in, in so many projects along the way, whether they were gallery exhibitions or major expansions or brick recladding. You know, I feel like the Walker is very much a part of my being.